Well, the pyramid, it's, it's an interesting word itself. You know, the word pyramid comes from the Greek, which is a composite word of pyra or pyra, pyra, pyro, which means fire, and then mid, middle. So the word actually means fire in the middle, pyramid, fire in the middle. Fire, the, the Greeks were referring to, is again, not the physical fire as such, but rather the generative fire, the generative force of the universe. And that's what they were talking about when they mean um, fire in the middle. Now, what's interesting is the Masonic symbol, you know, where you have the compass and the square interlacing, which is actually coincidentally makes the Star of David too, just it's missing little top pieces, if you notice. There's the G in the middle. A lot of people think that means geometry or God, and it doesn't. It actually means generation. A lot of Masonic scholars have, have, have vindicated that answer many times, which I guess generation in, in the most abstract sense could mean God if you, you know, if you defined it as such. But again, it means the same generation that the, the Greeks used to describe the word pyramid. And it was the, they referred to this generative force of the universe, you know, this kind of like general pranic force, if you want, this pranic energy or uh, the very life force that creates the universe, but not necessarily life, but just the universe in general, the planets, matter, stars, galaxies, you know, this kind of life-giving substance, which is never seen, but it's really responsible for all things living. And that's what they meant. It was that action, that generated force that they venerated in the pyramids. And that's actually what they even venerated when you have, you know, the Holy Trinity the, um, in Christianity. That, that trinity actually represents that generated force, just like the Greeks notarized it in the pyramid, which is what the word pyramid means, fire in the middle. Or again, you know, the Masonic lodges, they have the, you know, compass coming down with the uh, interlacing uh, square, interlacing it, and then there's the G in the middle. The G actually means generation or the generated force because it's the, um, the heavenly principle which is represented by the compass and the mundane or the physical force of the universe interlacing. So it's again the mother and the father concept or the, the masculine or the feminine or the uh, spirit and the matter interlacing and in the middle is the generated force, whatever that may be. So it's kind of an interesting tidbit on the, the etymology really of the word pyramid. What's interesting though is when we, you know, we fast forward to Egypt, a lot of people aren't familiar with the fact that pyra the pyramids in Egypt actually come in two different categories. The, the pyramids in, in Egypt, there's, there's several hundreds of them. Most of them were actually built in the, in the dynasties that people talk about, you know, ranging from around 2000 BC to 5000 BC, a lot of the pyramids. But the three major pyramids, the pyramids of Giza, the three major uh, pyramids of Giza, were actually constructed much, much longer before the several hundred pyramids that you find lying really across the plateau of the Nile and, and of the Giza Strip. And what's interesting is, and this is actually a fact that's never mentioned, is there's never been a pharaoh discovered in a pyramid. So that whole, you know, that whole theory where they say that they were built for tombs for kings or the pharaohs is, is null because there's never been, never once has there been a pharaoh discovered in any pyramids. It's always been discovered around 80 miles south of where the pyramids are in a place called the Valley of the Kings, which, you know, a lot of these, these mummies were found in these type of catacomb uh, chambers, sarcophaguses, really underneath the ground. Uh, they were kind of like catacombs, if you will. And what's interesting about that then is then the question is, well, what were the pyramids for? And then why were there two different, really, uh, eons of pyramid builders in what today is considered modern Egypt? Um, of course, the most interesting one is the really, you know, not so much the, the hundreds of littler ones that are around that region, but the three major ones of the Giza Strip. The magnitude of those pyramids are something that modern day engineers can't replicate, even on a smaller scale, a 1 to 60 scale. Not to mention, you know, those blocks are, you know, 60 tons in some cases, and the precision of them is something almost modern computers can't, you know, uh, to mimic. So to try to uh, justify those kinds of structures with modern or even you know archaic building but even modern building is ludicrous because you know so many people have proven that that, that simply can't be true you know without deriving too much from the from the subject matter that's kind of the uh, ball of pyramids well you know it's not necessarily what the pyramid itself is made out of but rather the structure and it, and, it, and it goes back to the the etymology of the word the pyramid because if you look at what the pyramid is it kind of it stems a little bit even from what we were talking about in numerology, and that is that the, the pinnacle of the pyramid is really, if you abstract again, the, pi the pinnacle of the pyramid is really the point of singularity between this side, the physical world, and the either, you know, or the, or the Akashic side of things, and that's kind of like a symbolic point, and that's why they always use, like, um, a, a very high well conductor to 
basically extract energy from one side of the universe, which was the, you know, the invisible spiritual side, and then to later allocate it down evenly inside things which were inside the pyramid. And that's why you can see, you know, the pyramids like we talked about in Giza, there's no way that could have been a tomb because it made no sense for it to be a tomb. Could have been a battery, could have been a, maybe uh, some kind of a transportation device, could have been maybe some kind of a mode or means of communicating with the other side, you know, the spiritual side, some kind of an amplifier for that, but by no stretch of the imagination could it have been a tomb. It would have made no sense, you know, just if you look at the, if you look at the structure of it, but that's really the significance of the pyramid is that just the structure of itself, it seems to gather this, the, the electromagnetic force of the Akashic energy and its pinnacle or the, the capstone of it and distribute the energy evenly within the structure itself. That's why it's so, it's so profound and really it kind of facilitates meditation and it even it reestablishes equilibrium in the body and, and, and organisms in general because it does really take that creative, that generative force the life force, and then it distributes evenly to any kind of objects or organisms within the structure itself, thereby creating an equilibrium. And that's why it has, you know, very good properties, healing properties, and it also really helps meditation a lot, you know, tenfold, some people say. The, well, the multiple capstone is really just a different, the way it would gather that, that Akashic energy. You know, the granite actually works on a different frequency than rose quartz, than regular quartz, and then, you know, gold obviously works different than silver. I don't know if you know this, but there's a very good book out there people should read. It's called The Body Electric, and it was published in the 1970s. And it showed, for example, that for many centuries, even up until the late 1800s, silver was actually used to clean if you had tumors or any kind of infections or bacteria on your body. What people would do is take a silver plate and kind of taper it onto wherever the infected part of the body was. And for whatever reason, the silver had certain properties that would nullify the bacteria and literally pull it through the pores of the skin and thereby curing whatever kind of infection or bacteria or even tumors in cases people would have. And silver did that. I mean, there's actually record, scientific record of that proving it. And today, for some reason, it's not talked about. So, you know, that's one thing. Gold, for example, is one of the best conductors in the world. Why that's significant is because, you know, your brain is almost entirely an electromagnetic organism. So, you know, logic alone would tell you that if you want to amplify the electromagnetic organism, which is your brain, then you want to use a good conductor, which is, you know, why you want to use something like gold um, to, to really be an amplifier and then a medium of distribution through the Akashic Records back down to you, assuming that you'd be in the pyramid. You know, the interchangeable capstone is, is really for different effects, is what it would be.